Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to be doing an introduction to Stata. Now there's two ways you can open Stata. You can either go to your apps and directly open it, or if you have a .dta data file, you could click on that .dta Stata file, and that will, a data file, and that will open Stata in the process of opening that data set. So once you have Stata open, let's just sort of briefly talk through what all the different sections are here. Uh, so this command window is essentially how you're going to communicate with Stata. And, uh, you know, any command you type here, for example, uh, di, which stands for display, display 5 plus 5, enter, and it tells me 10, right? So anything you display here, uh, the history of every command that you've typed in that session will show up over here in this review window on the left. So here, this is again, uh, just showing you everything you've done so far. If I do di display 18 times 24, enter. Again, that's not only showing me the answer here uh, in this main results window, but it's again, the, the history of every command I've typed so far is here in the left. Uh, so again, just to recap, here is the results. Anything, any command you enter here in the command window, it'll show up directly here, the results of that command. If you type in an invalid command, like for example, if I just do five plus five, enter, it's not gonna recognize that. So it's gonna say not valid. Uh, and that's gonna show up in red over here. So any command you had typed that wasn't a valid command uh, is in red. Now the point of this is, let's say I had typed a command previously and I wanna retype that command, uh, then instead of having to physically retype it, display five plus five, I could literally just go back and click on this and it immediately appears here. And notice if that way, if I wanted to edit it, if I wanted to say five plus six, then it's gonna, you know, I can change it, but that way I can go back. And again, that way, if any command was invalid, you'll know it's red. So if you, you know, if you don't wanna go back to that, cause then you're gonna get an error again, unless you change it. But anyway, so that's that, that's how this works. So clearly one of the commands that you're already seeing here is display. One sort of use of Stata, it's not a common use at all, but one use of it is to use it like a calculator. You don't really need a separate calculator uh, because you could just use Stata uh, to do a calculator. You just have to type in the display command before you type in the operation you want it to do, and then it'll do that operation and show you the results. Uh, here on the right now, the variables window, Basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. It has every variable. Now, if you were to just open Stata directly from your, you know, apps, uh, then this is going to be blank because you haven't really loaded a data set. But whenever you load a data set, it'll show the variables that are currently available to you. So it'll show the variable name, and it'll show a label if there is one. And if you were to create a new variable, which in the next videos we'll talk about how to create new variables, those will show up here as well. So that's how this works. Now, your best friend when using Stata is the help command. If there's a command that you're looking up and you're really not sure, uh, you can just type help and then the name of that command. So help reg, reg is one of the most frequent commands you'll be using. So help reg, and immediately it tells me everything you need to know about that, including in that command, what type of variables you would type in afterwards, if there's any additional options for that command. Uh, examples even in some cases. Um, so yeah, so essentially this help and then the name of a command is uh, is basically your way to do a curated Google search. Instead of searching the web and getting a whole bunch of stuff, here it'll directly give you Stata's answer to what that command is and how to best use it. So now, one of the first things you should do when you open up Stata, when you're you know beginning a session to analyze data, is to create a do file. Think of the do file as basically like, you know, a, a Microsoft Word type-ish file. Uh, and so I'm gonna do file, new, do file. All right, so this new do file, again, so it's kind of like a Microsoft Word file in the sense that this is sort of uh, the document that I'll have, I'll take away from the end of this session. And uh, to end, and, and so the point of this is to really keep track of what were all the commands that you used that gave you the results that you got. So notice here that um, one one thing that you can do if you want to just type random stuff like my name, like oh yeah, 
my name at the beginning of the document like you might for a Word document. Now the problem here is this do file, it's actually like an active document. Like you could actually run each line of code, but because this is not a valid command on Stata, that's going to give me an error if I were to try to run my do file. Uh, and so what you want to do in that case is if you put an asterisk, anything that is green is sort of indicating that it's a comment rather than a command. And so the comment is really just internal. It's like for you. And you can put multiple asterisks if you want as well. So a common thing that you'll see is just people you know, having something like this where uh, they'll have a template where it's like their name, what class this is for, and you know, you know, the subject or the date or something like that, you know. So something like that, right? And so, so essentially, you could type in whatever you want if, if as long as you put in an asterisk, and that's really just uh, for you to make a comment. And so the comment could just be for you if you were to go back a month later and look at your do file and see how you got the results that you did. And if you typed in a line of code that you're like, oh, I'm not really sure if I'm going to understand this line of code that I'm using a month from now, well, then you can always type in a com uh, comment. So for example, let's say you just type in di5 plus 5, and then you can just put a little comment there. This is to add this to that, right? If you forgot why you did this, then you could just put a little comment to remind yourself why you did that line of code or what exactly the variable means if there is one things like that. So essentially this is how you're going to use a uh, you know a do file and again the comment uh, the commands that we'll see in the next few videos will obviously get more complicated than just simple operations but essentially those would be the commands that you would populate with this and then you would save this do file and again it's sort of like a like a an interactive Microsoft Word document where the green stuff is just you know words that are for you or for the reader uh, if you're sharing it with somebody and the actual the non-green stuff the blue and the black texts are actual commands for Stata to run so if I were to just uh, open this do file you know, if I were just to clear this completely so this is just clearing me of everything and I were to just run this do file it's gonna basically run the do file show me the results of that right so notice it's basically showing you not just the do file but also the results notice this 10 is not a part of my do file, but it is a part of the results here because I ran the do file. So again, this this over here, this button on the top right, the execute button, basically commands uh, commands it to run the entire do file. So let's say I also have 18 times 4, you know, something like that. Uh, so if I were to run this do file again, now again it's running both of those commands, and it's also showing the comments, but Let's say you're in the midst of working on something and you don't really want to run the whole thing, you just want to temporarily w run one line of it. I could just select this one line, hit the uh, the do button, the execute button on the right, and it'll just run that one line for me, All right? So it's do this thing and it's running that one line. So this is basically how you do it, uh, how you, you know, begin, you just start a do file and then you just sort of keep track of the commands. And the point of this is when you're doing your thing you're probably gonna make mistakes you know everyone makes mistakes you know you might even if you use a comma where you shouldn't or something or you spell a variable name incorrectly uh, you know you're gonna get an error and so what you're doing it you know so you could sort of use this command thing just while, while you're getting started but when you make a mistake you could you know you can learn from that and once you have the final command that you're gonna use that gave you the results you can then sort of copy paste that command into your do file so that way your final do file just consists of the correct lines of codes that gave you the results that you wanted and then you save that with any comments and that's a great way to keep track of your work.